In our last episode, we discovered that the Protectron that's been hovering around our camp was carrying another algorithm update. Upon inspecting this algorithm, we discovered that it was sending Whale Song to an unnamed target and monitoring that target. Presumably, these instructions were being sent by something called Athena. And someone or something with a USSA authorization code changed the Protectron's mode from search and destroy to monitor and defend. But at the moment, we don't know what this means and neither does Sophia. But just as we destroyed the Protectron, Sophia registered two signal bursts, one to a robo brain and one to something else. While she follows up on those leads, she sends us to fetch a sample of Serum Z, the serum that Arctos Pharma developed for use on astronauts in zero-G environments. We discovered that Serum Z was being held at West Tech. And so chopping our way through West Tech, after getting the perfectly preserved pie waiting for us on the rooftop, of course, we finally find a copy of Serum Z while exploring the research wing. We find it on the second floor of the research wing in a cabinet, and Serum Z looks a lot like a vial of human blood. I wonder exactly how much of this they put into Sophia. Heading back to Sophia, we see that Emerson has returned. Hey there, look who decided to grace us with his presence. I brought another emergence kit. It's well past its expiration, but, well, everything is. It should be fine. Thanks, Emerson. I appreciate it. I do. We have some questions for you, though. We know you made the deal with Arctos Pharma. Why? It was my job. I was told to do that. I, I don't remember the reasons why anymore. What does it matter anyway? It's done. It's over. Is the serum causing these headaches? I honestly am not sure. It's possible. When we first used the serum on Robobrains, some of them had terrible hostile outbursts. Most of those Robobrains were put down, but you should adjust your scanner to make sure you pick them up too, just in case. Enough, Emerson. Why should we trust anything you say? I'm a different man now. It's been decades. I've been eating out of trash cans. I barely remember anything from back then. I have been trying to help when and where I can. I promise I have. I've diverted the robots when possible. I just couldn't destroy them myself. I came to Appalachia because I knew this ship was running out of fuel and I knew its autopilot would steer it here. Why can't you just tell me everything that happened? Because I have to finish my job, too. I had one more task to do here in Appalachia, and I'm close. Let me clean up my own messes. I have to go. I'll drop off some more emergence kits soon. Just please stop looking into this. There's a robo-brain on your trail. Focus on that. This answers so many questions for us. It explains why the USSA robots were coming towards our camp and then mysteriously turning away. Emerson was intercepting them before they could reach Sophia and changing their mode from search and destroy to monitor and defend. It was Emerson using the code USSA 1010. So in a way, despite everything that Emerson's done, he kind of saved Sophia's life. Though we also learned there's a limit to what Emerson can do, or is willing to do. There's now a robo-brain hunting Sophia, and it didn't sound like Emerson could do much about it. He told us to focus on it. And now we know why the spaceship fell out of orbit. It ran out of fuel. It could no longer correct its trajectory, and so it plummeted to Earth. But we still don't know why Sophia survived, but everyone else died. So it's real. The serum is real. How... How could they do this? Why didn't they just ask? I probably would have agreed. Damn it! 
Part of me wonders if Emerson told us about this robo-brain so he would have more time to do... whatever he's up to. Eh, it was rather easy to pinpoint it once I realized I had to recompute the signals for things that had some organic parts. We need more information on Emerson. Agreed. I followed Emerson's signal when he left, and he had quite a strange route. Acted like he was being followed, but I don't think he was. He went to a few locations, maybe collecting supplies? I I'm not sure. One of them had some high security holotapes. I'll clean up the signal for you to track by the time you're back. Why Robobrains? I bet they started on Robobrains because they could be more easily controlled. Right? I guess that didn't pan out. I hope they didn't feel a lot of pain. It seems like they weren't putting them into the deep sleeper pods. Maybe that's why they became aggressive? Got it. Kill the robot. Again. I'll be right here then. Don't worry. You don't miss that much while you're out. Traders stop by from time to time. A couple other random people, but it's pretty quiet. Do you get any other holotape games or comics from traders? I thought about it a lot. For a while I thought, well, what's the point of comics? Of games? Seemed like such a distraction from the stress in my life. From finding out the truth. From fixing what was left. But I realized that it's not only a distraction. Enjoyment is a fundamental part of life. Even a stressful life. And you know what? I am still stressed and trying to fix my life, but it's easier to remember why I care when I can still feel joy. Wow, that was some great wisdom from Sophia there. And I think that's something we can all relate to in these times. Why would they develop this serum? It has to be a prototype for something bigger. That's all I can figure. I'm gonna need additional samples to learn more, though. We can pass an agility check of 14 plus to say, I hope you've been practicing some self-defense. Oh, I shot three flying insects while you were dealing with the USSA robot, and I didn't miss a single time. Then I traded their parts to Grom when he passed by, and well, here, you can have this stuff. I don't need it. With that, she hands us a plan. I got the plan for a fire axe. I wasn't able to get this dialogue check on my other character, so I only triggered it once. Therefore, I'm not sure if this is a randomly generated plan or if it's always a fire axe. We again can flirt with her by saying, if you're the mistress of mystery, then who am I? Hmm, you are a conundrum, my friend. I thought about the man-to-man, -man, but oh, there's something peculiar about you. Something delightfully unpredictable. This response is different based on our special stats, and we can cycle through all of them if our special stats are high enough. For example, if we have high enough intelligence, she says, If we're dressing up, I presume? Hmm, I like it. Well, of course, you're the inspector. I think that's obvious. I've seen how your mind works. If we have high enough strength... <laughs> Did you really think you weren't some form of grognak? I mean, you're kind of a monster. A very likable monster, mind you. All right, I'll be back later, Sophia. I hope you won't be gone for too long. With that, we complete the quest past expiration, and we begin the quest no-brainer. Kill the USSA Robobrain. Strangely enough, this pre-war USSA robot Robobrain is hanging out with a bunch of cultists. We find him at a brand new location, Moth Home. The Moth Home and many of these new Mothman cultist abodes resemble nests. They're circular locations hedged by stone and brambles. And here in the middle of one, we find the Robobrain. Job done! We don't have to loot anything on its inventory. But while here, we can clear the moth home. Where his wings flutter, I will follow. And I will not fear the darkness of night. You cannot... I will 
while I was here, I found a scorched Mothman sitting on one of these Mothman perches. Even though he was scorched, he didn't attack and he was invincible. No matter how many times I shot him with my shotgun, even when I depleted his health, he didn't die. Hey there, fella. Enjoying your perch? Just gonna hang out here? Okay. That unbeliever! I will not falter. Against one of the walls, we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk right next to a trough filled with blood. There's a Nuka-Cola cranberry on a bureau here, but there's no lore and not much else to the place. Heading back, we can check in with Sophia. When you killed that robo-brain, the scanner seemed to pick up on some high security signals all around the area. Maybe it was somehow interfering with our scanner? That's my best guess. Oh, that was nice, Sophia. Keep jamming. A lot of these are high security signals, things related to the deep sleep projects. <sighs> Other projects, too. Ones I don't know much about. From the signature of the signal here, it seems to be a classified meeting between top officials regarding the Deep Sleep Project. Can you stop by and pick it up? I figure it might give us some more leads, or a name, or anything. Ooh, a classified meeting. That sounds fun. Do you really think this holotape is important? I know my old department, and... They didn't record a lot, not unless they had to, but when they had to, it was a big deal. Any update on Emerson? He is up to something. Right there with you. I've set up the scanner to monitor him separately and give me updates. Right now, he's near a bunch of random robots. I think he's also monitoring us, you see. So, we have to pretend like we don't care what he's doing. Get the top secret meeting notes. You got it. Yes, I suspect it's a holotape, but it isn't an unusual place. As if it was moved here to hide it, maybe. Do you think anyone else from the USSA is still around? Maybe. For all I know, there could be other astronauts stranded up there in other experiments. Or... Maybe some of them went to work for other programs, and are trying to save what's left of the world. I wish I knew, my friend. I wish I knew. There was something wrong with that Robobrain. Not surprised. While you were there, I saw a bunch of blips for other USSA Robobrains that had been destroyed over the years. And there were a great many of them around some old USSA data facilities. Trying to get inside for some reason? I don't know. Did the Robobrain send a signal when it was destroyed? I thought maybe it was a corrupt command sent out to a source console somewhere. It was just Red Sunset. And that's it. We can again flirt with her by saying, after all this is done. Wanna play some Red Menace? Oh, be still, my beating heart. That sounds like a dream come true, my dear friend. But also, you don't stand a chance. Okay, my dear, dear friend. We can again flirt with this dear friend by saying, there's always a place for you here, Sophia. Thank you, my dear, kind friend. I've come to think of your place as my home. And I've come to think of you as more than a friend, too. Right. <clears throat> well, um, I'll be back later, Sophia. I hope you won't be gone for too long. <laughs> With that, we complete the quest, no brainer, and begin the quest, calling long distance. Find the high security deep sleep experimental holotape. She said it was in a strange place, as if someone was trying to hide it. And sure enough, we find it in a flooded train yard. The flooded train yard isn't involved in any other quest in the game, so we'll explore it here. And there's some interesting lore. In the middle of the road leading to the train yard are a number of ruined trucks, and even a forklift moving around some barrels. There's a shack to the right with a bunch of fusion generators, and a shack to the left. We'll start by going towards the shack to the left. Moving around back behind this truck, we find the corpse of a trader on the ground, and we can open this trailer door. 
Inside, we find a stack of rolled canvas and a hollow tip on a bed. Sight to see. Well, that was a sight to see. Near a hundred cars slamming on together. What a sound. I had no idea things that heavy could fly like that. It was like watching dominoes tossed by a toddler. But when they hit the levee, I was sure I was going to be washed away. But I'm still here. Everything wrecked past fixing. I need to find a new place to stay. Those pumps don't got it in them. But I'll never forget that day. Not as long as I live. However long that is. <laughs> I think I caught that skin thing people been getting. Can't stop itching. This mama sounds like she was here when the bombs dropped in 2077, 26 years ago. Perhaps this can explain why this train yard is the sunken train yard. When the bombs dropped, they destroyed a levee, which then flooded the train yard. And it looks like mama was witness to all of the cars being knocked about by an atomic blast. Perhaps she too was exposed to the fallout from this blast, which might explain why she couldn't stop itching her skin. Perhaps she was in the beginning stages of becoming a ghoul. We see a huge amount of wreckage, cars on the road, but also train cars on the nearby train tracks. There are quite a few structures littering the sunken train yard. Let's explore this place bit by bit. There is one more trailer door we can open here in the middle of the road, but in the back all we find are big blue containers. No idea what they were transporting. We'll start by exploring this shack to the left. Here we find a raider veteran cooking some meat. I don't think she was hostile, but my knee-jerk reaction was to kill her. However, if we didn't kill her, and our reputation with the raiders is high enough, we can have a conversation with her. Hey, looking for a hot meal? I've got some extra radstag meat I'm cooking up for folks. I was only able to choose one of these, so I said, I don't like the gaminess of radstag. Got anything else? Huh, no sense in wasting a perfectly good piece of meat on someone who can't appreciate it. <sighs> Here's some cat meat I grilled. Trust me, it's fresh. Enjoy. And she gives us some cat meat steak. Mm, Got so hungry, I once cooked up a buddy of mine. Don't judge. He was already dead. I don't like to stab people. On the count, it dulls the blade too fast. Don't tell anyone. But I think the food at Crater tasted like radioactive dog shit. Here's a tip. Put a few extra rounds in that rad stag. Kill and tenderize. We find a rad stag hanging here amongst the wreckage. Barrels of toxic waste. I wasn't in my power armor character, so I had to avoid these. Heading into the shack, we find ammunition lying about on some of the shelves. And against the eastern wall, we find a plan on a cabinet next to an armor bench. Against the eastern wall, we find a skill level three locked box safe next to a desk with a skill level one locked terminal. New Appalachian Railroad, NAR Personal Message System. We find two entries in the first Geological Stability Report. Geological Stability Report submitted August 21st, 2077. Attention! Recent tests along the perimeter and along connecting rail lines indicate clearly a high risk of catastrophic erosion. Existing train yard infrastructure is at risk. The report shows an immediate need for reinforced retaining walls and support foundations for the entire yard and rails leading up to Watoga. Attached is the conclusive data from the tests, as well as engineering estimates for suggested preventative measures. Oh, so wait, was this place prone to flooding even before the war? Was the state we find this place in preventable? In the next one, response from AMS, Atomic Mining Services. We have received your report. While AMS feels for your circumstances, we reject your accusation that the earthquakes have anything to do with our mining tests. Our own geologists have verified that these were natural occurrences. Ho oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. Well, we know from the lore that we found at AMS, which I did a video on that you can watch here, that Atomic Mining Services was mining for ultrasight by detonating nukes underground. They're responsible for what happened to Welch. Could it be that they were detonating nukes under the Cranberry Bog as well? It seems like this geological stability report was commissioned by the New Appalachian Railroad, then sent to AMS, who firmly rejected it. Of course, because relocating an entire railroad would be expensive. Heading out the door here, we see the bulk of the train yard off to the southeast. 
But there was that bank of fusion generators off to the right. We'll head there first. Most of these generators are completely destroyed, but one still has a functional fusion core inside. There is a little shack next to here, locked with a skill level zero lock. And inside... Oh... What do we have here? The corpse of a settler, dressed in military fatigues, sitting in a chair, surrounded by blood. On the pushcart next to her body are clear signs of torture. A masonry hammer, tongs, a screwdriver, a saw, and an ashtray filled with used cigarettes. Someone recently had been torturing this settler. Perhaps the raider we disposed of just a moment ago? If so, now I don't feel so bad. Well, there's nothing we can do for her now. Heading back out, we find a ruined military jeep with a skeleton inside and a 10 millimeter pistol. Then heading back to the road, we can follow it east into the train yard. Our path is blocked by numerous ruined cars. And hiding amongst these cars are Snallygasters. I reliably find Snallygasters here every time I visit, with characters of very different levels. So if you need to kill a Snallygaster for some reason, this is your place to go. Once the Snallygasters are dead, we can survey the path before us. We see two warehouses off to the left. Big tanks of some sort next to them. Maybe the pumps we heard about on that holotape. The road and rails have sunken into the earth. Someone has formed a ramp over the top of some of these trailers, and the trains are in utter disarray on the tracks to the right. To the far right, we find another small shack next to a large red crane and some post-war scrap shacks. That's where we'll head next. There's not much by the crane, but getting close to the shack, we see that it's surrounded by radioactive barrels. We have to make this quick. The shack itself has a ruined Nuka-Cola machine with sadly no Nuka-Cola inside, scrap and chems in the lockers, a couple of filing cabinets, and one skill level two locked box safe. Moving out the door here, we see that the shack overlooks the train tracks. Looks like there are three sets of train tracks. One is empty, the middle one has a line of trains, and the third one has a line of trains. We'll start by exploring this middle track. We can climb into many of these, but not all of them. In this rear train car, we find some sugar and a recipe on a table, and clear signs that somebody camped out here. There's a cooking stove here, with a bunch of scrap and a makeshift work table in the back of the trailer. There's a little ginger snuggles in one of the cabinets, and on the makeshift table, we find a random magazine. Hey, backwoodsman, home in the hills. I started a buzzard brawl. Carnivorous Rabbits of Appalachia. Taxidermy feature, making the most out of a carcass. Thrilling true stories for rugged men. But the problem with this place being in the middle of the Cranberry Bog is... It can attract scorch beasts. But after hiding for a spell, this scorch beast wouldn't go away. It was then that I realized that the Scorch Beast was attacking another Snallygaster. I shot this with my second character who wasn't high enough level to take on a Scorch Beast by herself, so all I could do was hide and wait for him to pass by. Sneaking east down the track, we can explore the next train car. This one has a bunch of radioactive barrels just outside, so I had to make this one quick. There's a coffin here, minor scrap on the western side, near to a footlocker, and a power armor workbench to the east with more scrap behind it. Jeez, how long does it take to kill one Snallygaster? We see an open trailer across the tracks so we can sneak inside. In the back, we find a raider corpse hugging a skill level three locked box safe with all sorts of goodies inside. Heading out. Oh, bad timing. After waiting a bit, we can head back to the tracks and explore the third car. On the eastern side, we find a shelf with another randomly generated plan sitting here. A bunch of 45 caliber ammunition stacked on top. By this time, the Scorch Beast had moved on. 
Continuing east down the tracks, we see that these train cars are completely wrecked. We don't find ramps that enter them. Some of them are even on their ends. We can't explore them, so instead we can move north and travel across the scrap bridge built atop these ruined trailers. This brings us to a series of sunken train cars, only one of which we can enter. Inside we find a duffel bag, an ammo crate, more outfits and ammunition. Hopping out, we see that we've made our way towards the warehouses. Next to the warehouses are a couple of sunken ones. These aren't worth exploring. We don't find anything in either of them. So instead we can move into the intact one furthest to the left. Heading inside. <coughs> oh, punji boards and a power armor station nearby, but we hear something. Another Snallagaster, hiding. Jumping up, we can try to hide. Where did he go? Did he climb outside already? Ow! Oh! Oh, what? I didn't know Snallygasters could hit me through windows. Well, this guy was a tough one. I ended up doing a lot of kiting and tricky maneuvering to finally kill this guy. Jerk. Ugh. With the Snallygaster dead, we can head back inside. There's a first aid kit at the top of the shelf in a small northern room of this warehouse. The ground level is too flooded and murky. Nothing here but shipping containers, but we can take a staircase to the loft level where we find a couple of containers, another first aid kit, another ammo box, and a sleeping bag. Now the second warehouse right next to us is too filled in with rubble and mud to walk in from the ground floor. The only way to access it is from the loft level of the first warehouse. If we move to the western side of the loft level, we find some beverages on a crate, and we can sneak around to the rooftop where we find a bridge leading to warehouse number two. Inside, we immediately begin to pick up radiation, so we gotta make this quick. After looting a stim pack on a cabinet, we find a hollow tape on a bed. Brotherhood of Steel report, train yard. Scouting report, Brotherhood Squire Schultz. This whole train yard is half sunk in the ground. Anyone in the middle of that mess is just begging for a sniper to pick them off. These two warehouses seem to be the only good defensible positions. There's a nice walkway between them and plenty of places to get the drop on someone. <laughs> I might actually be getting the hang of this. Considering we find a sharpshooter's assault rifle still here after all this time, we can only presume that Squire Schultz here didn't get the drop on anyone and likely died here. On the western side of this loft level, we find a wooden crate, a couple of containers, another recipe, a bunch of Nuka-Cola, and a skillable two-locked box safe. There's a cooking stove here, and taking the staircase down to the ground floor, we see where all of that radiation was coming from. A bunch of radioactive barrels right next to an explosives crate. But as we already know, there's no way out from this ground level. It's too filled in with rubble. So we gotta climb back up and out the hole in the wall to move on. With the warehouses explored, all that's left is that last line of train cars and a switching tower off in the distance. Moving south, we see those big tanks we saw from a distance, which might be those pumps we read about. As we move towards the switching tower, we find a couple more train cars on this first track. The frontmost blue one has a number of containers, including a footlocker, and then moving around it to access the orange one, we see that there are more buildings to explore. A bunch of hangars right by a ruined engine. Some of them look too badly ruined to explore, but we'll check them out anyway. Rounding the blue train car, we can move west until we find an orange one. And heading inside, we find an end of dungeon steamer truck with the Deep Sleep Program Phase 2 holotape. Doctors, hello from Earth. The full board is here, waiting for your reports. Dr. Carroll, can you begin? Phase two analysis. Subject Degweta is responding well. The sleeping pod is performing within all expected parameters. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, yes, the board has a question for you. How long can the subject remain in your device? I wouldn't expect much degradation to occur for at least a few decades. Hard to estimate beyond that. Over. Is Dr. Nowak on the line? Oh, um, yes, that's me. I'm, I'm here. And by here, I mean it, in orbit in space, looking down at the Earth where you all are. We got it, Doctor. Thanks. We have a question for you. 
can you determine whether the connection has been made? Yes, I can determine that the connection has been made. The Athena unit has full access. Confirmed. Pathways are open. Connection is complete. Thank you. We have a question for Dr. Lee. I'm here. Sorry. Just had to fix a transmitter refraction. Enough. Dr. Lee, how stable is the ship at its current position in orbit? Uh, fine. It's fine. Should probably last, uh, as long as she does, anyway. Probably. I, I mean, definitely. Perfect. Oh, is the ship's USSA bot currently available and nearby? Affirmative. Pandora unit is ready for orders. Excellent. Pandora, escort the doctors to their own personal deep sleep pods. You need to say the code, Rob. Your team made it. You should know that. <laughs> Red sunrise? Expulsion will begin in 30 seconds. Enter your assigned pod immediately. Wait, what? This isn't part of the experiment methodology. Well, also, we don't agree, right, doctors? You can't do this! To get a sleep pod is inside the main escape capsule. We need to get it out so we can get out of here. Come on, someone help me open this thing! The board is in violation of our contract! I'm, I want the USSA on the line right now! The USSA is well aware of the current status, Dr. Carroll. Thank you. Please cooperate now. Expulsion will begin in 30 seconds. Enter your assigned pod immediately. Blade electrified. 10 seconds. Get in! Get in quick! Phase 3 is now officially underway. Now, we just have to wait and see how Athena responds with three sources. Congratulations, everybody. They knew about it. All of Sophia's co-workers. Bernard, Lee, Novak. They knew that Sophia was an experiment. They designed the technology that the board was using to experiment on her. They knew and they went along with it, but then they were betrayed. To tie up loose ends, they were also put in deep sleep pods. They three were added to the experiment, and now we know why they didn't survive. Only Sophia's deep sleep pod was in the main escape capsule. And her co-workers didn't care about her. We heard them conspiring to pull her out of the main escape capsule so that they could save themselves. Only they didn't have time. Pandora made sure of that. Dr. Lee was in charge of making sure that the spaceship maintained orbit, and he did a good job. It just didn't have enough fuel to last 26 years. And when it fell out of orbit, Sophia's escape pod jettisoned, which is why Sophia and Pandora survived, but everyone else died. And Emerson not only knew, but he used Pandora at the board's request to place the other scientists in their own coffins. Sophia said that this holotape was in a strange place and it sure is a flooded train yard. What's it doing here? How could it even be here? There is only one explanation. Emerson moved it here. He moved it here because he was ashamed the world might find out his role in this travesty. But what was this board? It's not spelled out to us in the subtitles. The board of what? The board of Robco? The board of vault -Tec? Why did this board want to run this experiment? And why was the USSA complicit in it? The train cars we explored on the other track don't reveal many secrets. We found a couple of containers, a lot of scrap, one weapons workbench. After looting what we can, we can head back east to finally explore the switching tower. At the top, we find a bobblehead lying on the ground. I believe this was probably on the desk and knocked off by the Scorch Beast attack. There's a sleeping bag here. Someone tried to make a camp. We find a skill level three locked box safe right next to a desk with a skill level two locked terminal. New Appalachian Railroad, NAR personal message system. Here we find two entries. 
in the first message from R. Wilson, sent August 25th, 2077. I don't want a single dime spent on that geological report nonsense. I've been with NAR for over 30 years, and I've never seen any of this so-called sinking or erosion as the report claims. Do you think NAR would have built a rail yard here in the first place if it were just going to sink into the swamp? Of course not. And in the next one, message from T. Pendleton, sent August 24th, 2077. One word, Nuka-Cola Cran. Try one. You can thank me later. This is one of our only pieces of lore related to Nuka-Cola Cranberry that made it into the published game, which I covered in my video on Nuka-Cola Cranberry that you can watch here. From this terminal, we can also unlock the safe if we haven't already. But this message from R. Wilson confirms it. The new Appalachian Railroad wasn't stupid enough to build a rail yard on sinking swampland. This rail yard's been around for decades, and it never had any earthquakes or sinking problem. It was Atomic Mining Services, with their underground nuclear explosions that destabilized the land here, which caused the rail yard to sink into the ground. We know that the rail yard's collapse likely happened before the bombs dropped. They already had forklifts out here trying to clean up some of the wreckage. If we can believe the holotape we found in the back of that truck, it was the nuclear detonation of 2077 that destroyed the nearby levees. And since this train yard was already sinking into the ground, the levees flooded into it, creating the flooded train yard. One more casualty to pre-war Appalachia's unscrupulous mining companies. From here, we can explore the hangars. We see three that we might be able to explore, but there's not much here. The first one has about three containers with chems and minor loot inside. The second one is completely filled in with mud and water. Nothing left here. And the final one has a few train cars inside. One of the train cars has a skill level two locked box safe, a few other containers and a shelf filled with scrap. And the last one has an explosives crate, an ammo box and ammunition gingerly laid out on some crates. With the flooded train yard fully explored and all of its secrets uncovered, we can head back to Sophia to share this startling revelation. Did you listen to this already? But one thing at a time. The key seems to be Athena. Wait, one of the signatures I've been tracking. Arachne. Oh, that can't be a coincidence. There's a signal coming from some sort of object. Something called Arachne. It's gotta be related. What do you know about Athena? I heard of it before, but it was some other department, I thought. Dr. Novak transferred to our department from theirs. I think. Are you doing okay with all of this? <sighs> Everyone I knew was manipulating me. Using me. I was their guinea pig. I need some time to process. So I'm looking for Arachne? All right. It's got to be connected to Athena. Both are from Greek mythology. Arachne was a weaver and a brilliant one. She challenged the goddess Athena somehow and, well, she was turned into a spider. You know, like Arachnids, right? Some versions of the story say she won. Others say Athena won. I don't remember the details. And does it matter? I don't know that either. I know it's a stretch, but it's the only connection I can think of. Are you okay? Are you, well, feeling yourself? I assume you mean, do I feel like my mind is being toyed with for some nefarious purpose? I don't know, I feel like me. But how can I even trust my own feelings? Can you explain that last holotape to me? It was a board meeting between the USSA and some corporations. They were talking with my crew after I was inside the sleeping pod. I was asleep in the pod when this was recorded. And well, it sounded like they were all in on the experiment. And I was the subject. They were, however, forced to partake in the same experiment against their wills. It doesn't bring me joy to hear it. But they did deserve it. They were connecting me to some external Athena unit. And Emerson was there. So he knew everything this whole time. 
because he did it all. Any idea what Arachne is? My best guess is a program or another robot. I just feel in my gut that Arachne is the key to everything. How are we doing, Sophia? Me and you? I know I can depend on you. And that you care about me. And that means a lot to me. And I care about you, too. Uh, I mean, we're, we're a great team together. We're hunting down my tortured past, righting the wrongs, and trying to build a better tomorrow together. <laughs> but seriously, I sort of think we should start our own team when all this is said and done. Rebuild Appalachia by righting all the wrongs. Together. We can again flirt with her by saying, I love coming home because I know you'll be here, Sophia. I don't know what my future holds, but I hope you're there. And I hope we're together. I'll be back later, Sophia. I hope you won't be gone for too long. With that, we complete the quest, calling long distance, and begin the quest, who sat down beside her, investigate the high security signal related to the Athena project. And of course we know that along came a spider who sat down beside her. We find ourselves wading deep into Greek mythology here, starting with Pandora. In Greek mythology, Pandora was the world's first woman. Pandora opened a jar containing all of the universe's evil, releasing evil into the world, what we now know as Pandora's box. In this story, Pandora, the feminine Assaultron robot, shoved the three scientists into their sleep boxes doing the opposite thing as Pandora, but having the same effect. What Sophia's co-workers did to her was evil, and she rained down that evil upon the earth. Now Arachne was a seamstress, a weaver, and she was so good that people came from all over Greece to watch her weave. But Arachne got a little bit full of herself. When the crowd suggested that she give thanks to the gods for her skill in weaving, she insisted that the gods had nothing to do with it, that only she was responsible for her own skill. When Athena heard of Arachne's pride, she disguised herself as an old woman and came down to Earth to confront her. As an old woman, she told Arachne that she shouldn't disrespect the gods because she was a mere mortal and she couldn't even compare to the gods. But Arachne responded that she could weave better than any god and she challenged the gods to prove her wrong. But it was then that Athena removed her disguise, revealing herself to be Athena, the goddess of, among other things, handicraft. I accept your challenge, said Athena, and the two weavers sat down to weave tapestries. Athena wove a beautiful tapestry depicting the gods in all of their might and splendor. This tapestry would humble Arachne, showing her how mortals simply couldn't compare to the magnificence of the gods. But Arachne wove a tapestry depicting all of the failures of the gods, their licentiousness, their drunkenness, their debauchery, and in particular, she highlighted Zeus, Athena's father, and all of the affairs that Zeus had with mortal women. If Zeus, a god, preferred to sleep with mortal women, how could Athena say that the gods were better? Athena didn't miss Arachne's not-so-subtle jab at the gods, but even worse, the quality of Arachne's tapestry was superior to that of Athena's. Her skill was evident. A mortal just defeated a god. In a furious rage, Athena tore up the tapestry, humiliating her in front of all of the people gathered to watch the contest. Arachne raced away weeping. Unable to cope with the shame, she hanged herself by a thread. But after Athena had time to cool down, she recognized that the skill Arachne had shouldn't be lost to the world. And so Athena turned Arachne into a spider and gave her and all of her descendants a single spool of thread to weave with and to hang from. So Arachne, the object we are now to retrieve, is a spider, a weaver, some sort of web? And this Athena is a god! 
some all-knowing AI in charge of this web woven by Arachne? We don't yet have enough pieces to put together this riddle. To find Arachne, we must travel to the uncanny caverns. But sadly, I am all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off at the Uncanny Caverns in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my members on YouTube and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.